How's it going, friends? And welcome back to the channel. So, as you can see, uh, I'm not quite ready uh, in the new uh, workshop or studio, whatever we want to call it. Um, so, um, yeah, hopefully it won't be uh, too much longer. Hopefully the uh, workshop video um, build thing video, I haven't quite thought of a title for it yet, should be ready um, relatively soon. Uh, I'm not going to make any promises on when it's going to be because I'm not sure. Um, so, and I've been struggling a little bit, admittedly, to get back into you know back into the old rhythm uh, with the move and stuff being all over the place. So, um, we'll just get straight into uh, this video. Um, so, it's going to be the M4 Sherman from uh, Tamiya with a few little extra upgrades. So I hope you already have your good brew and a bicky to hand. As you can tell, I already forgot that bit because I'm so out of practice. So as you can see, this kit is a 1987 kit. So this came out three years after I was born. So for the age of the kit, actually, it's pretty decent. Um, the detailing is quite nice. Um, again, as you really always expect from Tamiya, it just goes together really easy. Um, there's some decent um, texturing on that front uh, plate there, as you can see. I'm going to add a little bit to it um, shortly. But as you can see, everything just fits really nicely. And again, just what you expect from Tamiya. So as you can see, on the engine deck of this particular Sherman isn't overly interesting, which is fine uh, in the case of this one because we're going to add a bit of resin stowage. Now, unfortunately, because it's been that long since I've actually put this video together, i completely forgotten who I got this resin kit from. So I do apologize. Um, I'm sure you'll find it. I got it off eBay. If you just put resin stowage, I'm sure you'll find uh, this exact one. Uh, but nice and detailed, relatively simple, um, but really effective. Now, as you can see, I've had to... Uh, scrape away quite a bit um, of material off the bottom and it still actually doesn't fit. It's mainly due to those inlet takey things. I'm not really sure what they are. Um, but because they're not going to be seen, uh, I'm just going to snip the ends off and make it fit. So once I've got that all sort of sorted out, I carried on uh, with all the main little gubbins that goes on the front of the tank. Now the only bit here that was a little bit, I'd say a bit fiddly, was putting these uh, front armour plates on because there was no real sort of location uh, for them. I'm guessing that you could, or there's versions of this didn't have these uh, front plates on, uh, so there's no actual main sort of like location pins or areas for it uh, to put down. So it was a little bit of guesswork, but you know, with a few reference photos and the instructions, I actually got them on. Uh, I think in the right place. Um, side armour, or extra side armour if you like. Um, as you can just about see there, there is a little bit of a faint um, raised mark um, on either side, which makes those actually really easy uh, to put into the right places. For the front of the tank, it actually does come with a uh, plastic wood uh, panel uh, to go across between the front uh, like mud guards. Um, it is detailed, uh, you can see it, but obviously I've uh, covered it, so it doesn't really matter. Um, some of these parts, um, as you can see, the light grey resin were from in the kit that I'd bought. Um, some of the other bits are gubbins that I've had um, from elsewhere. But as you can see them all in place and I've added a bit of string across the back because uh, it has the impression for the string but doesn't give you any string or rope I should say. It's not string because it's going to be rope. Um, so yeah, <laughs> as you can see the underca undercarriage, oh, I really lost the plot. The running gear, really simple and easy uh, to go in and fit together. Um, side skirts, again part of the kit and you can see I've damaged them a little bit and all I've done there is just took a pair of pliers uh, to it and just sort of bent and twisted them uh, out of place. If you want to bend them probably a little bit more, particularly on the front mud guards, just really carefully 
um, warm them up with something like a lighter or something or a candle um, just to soften the plastic up and you can bend them or alternatively if you've got something like a rotary tool or plenty of patience with the sanding sponge uh, thin it out um, to pretty much an inch of its life and you'd be able to manipulate it and put those dents in a little bit easier. The only other grade I got for this kit was the barrel. This is uh, from Albion Alloys and has a really nice um, grooved or groovy thing. Uh, yeah, uh, in uh, the barrel, so it gives you obviously the impression of it's been uh, rifled. All you need to do is um, make a few modifications uh, to get it uh, to fit in. To be fair, it fits quite well. It just it's fitted a little bit snugly. To them side bits um, but generally it goes in uh, quite well the only problem with it is obviously it's quite heavy compared to the plastic kit and goes all floppy and the last thing is we want is a floppy gun barrel so that was uh, fixed and glued into place I also added a few little extras uh, that was actually from in the kit some of the sort of side satchels um, or day bags or whatever they're called um, and just using uh, some Tamiya tape and a little bit of super glue uh, to make some of the satchel or bag uh, straps. Now, if you want to, and you're 100% sure on the location of the bags that you're putting on, or even stuff like rifle uh, slings, you can just glue them uh, into place if you want to. I actually left these free at the time because I was gonna paint them uh, separately but I think in the end I actually ended up uh, painting them all together so the kind of look I was going for on this one was a relatively faded um, olive drab so I thought rather than try and do it um, as a post shade um, I decided to sort of spray the model in this sort of uh, yellowy green uh, color and as always and almost inevitably kind of went a little bit um, heavy with the olive drab but I did go in it a little bit but I didn't have to do too much uh, post shading uh, later on so going into all the scratches and scuffs on the tank I just lightened up the uh, olive drab to give some light scratching and then went in with a sort of a uh, German grey uh, for the chipping uh, that's gone beyond uh, the paint but before doing any uh, washes uh, on the tank, I used a silver to highlight all the well beads in the areas that are gonna have the high amount of traffic, because uh, they tend to get rubbed and shine, don't really rust too much. For the wash itself, I've used AK's um, enamel wash, dark brown for green vehicles. Uh, I've found this to be a bit of a favorite of mine, uh, and that just got literally an entire wash uh, over the entire vehicle so then it was uh, time to start painting uh, all the stowage um, in their sort of like relatively respective sort of colors um, this is an area I'm still sort of working on so I'm not going to sort of really tell you how I've done it because I'm not really quite sure how I did it um, but generally I sort of like worked up from the darkest uh, color so in the case in these bags like a tanny brown color and then highlighted them uh, with a buff and then just gave them a, a brown um, wash considering I wasn't going to tell you how I've done it I've just told you exactly how I did it um, so yes yeah, so this is pretty much how I did for pretty much all uh, of the stowage but I did them sort of like individual um, pieces um, using sort of like you know I'm going to use one color at this point and then so like the brown bags and then the, the olive for the, the canvas and stuff like that. Um, and then obviously I've just seen there because I've forgotten I did it. Uh, was getting everything a bit of a uh, another buff uh, dry brush highlighting kind of thing. Um, yeah, so I was quite chuffed actually how this turned out considering this is something I'm still sort of uh, working on. Trying to find actually a better way of 
uh, doing this sort of stuff. Uniform as well is another one that I actually need to sort of um, work on a little bit more. But like I said, I think it actually turned out uh, quite nicely, really. So as we move on to the rust tones, I'm using my two new favourite uh, enamels, which is uh, the Meek Streaking Effect and AK's uh, Light Rust. So starting with the darker colour first, mainly hitting the heavier chips that I've put down uh, earlier on. Um, blending them in with some enamel thinners or white spirit and then again the same with the light rust. So for the lower part of the hull I've used AK Terrain's Muddy Ground for dioramas. It's an acrylic paste. Really good, really versatile to use. Um, it's got lots of gritty bits in it. Um, <laughs> depending on uh, which one you use because there's various ones, different colours and obviously different amounts of sort of like grit in them. Um, so with this, I've obviously mainly done it within the hull area and around the running gear. Very little um, around uh, the upper hull because obviously the side skirt's there. So very little of this is actually going to be thrown uh, up the sides. Obviously when it comes to tracks, rub um, the, you know, sort of like the end of the track, uh, the, the main cleat rubbery part on this particular one. Because of course it's going to spend a lot of time hitting the ground it will throw a lot of that um, mud off. So to give the impression that some of the thicker areas um, of mud uh, are still going to be a bit wet because of course they will take a little bit longer to dry, uh, I've used Tamiya's uh, dark brown uh, accent panel liner uh, for this bit and I think it actually does quite a good job um, of giving that sort of impression and of course it kind of does dry a little bit glossy so again still giving that impression of wet mud. So the last bit I did was a little bit of speckling, using the same stuff and a cocktail stick and a heavy loaded lead brush and just spattering that across just to give, you know, a little bit of impression of some wet specks that have been thrown up the side. So there we go, friends. Really nice, simple and easy kit uh, to do. Really enjoyable kit. Um, obviously, I throw a few added extras in there, but really good kit. It's also a really good kit if you're sort of thinking of uh, starting as well or in particularly uh, in armor which is a fun little sort of mojo build anyway it's now time to show you the finished model but before that i'd like to thank you guys ever so much uh, for obviously watching this video and for you guys uh, for sticking around obviously i've been away for quite a while now um i'll be back in soon with some proper modeling uh, hopefully um so yeah um really appreciate it and thanks to all the new subscribers that have joined the channel while I've been away and I hope you guys will stick around and enjoy the content I will be uh, producing. Anyway, if you'd like to help uh, support the channel uh, a little bit further, obviously just watching the video, sharing and liking helps a great deal. Even the comments are very much appreciated, but there are also links in the description down below if you want to help further. Anyway, enough for rambling, it's time to show you the finished model.